beautiful day to be standing here in front of all of you and honoring 58,282 of our best that gave the ultimate sacrifice for this great country. This is a dream of mine that came about about a year and a half ago. It materialized, started materializing in January of this year. We got this beautiful wall here and we thank all of you for being out here and showing respect and honor. I want to welcome all of you here. I ordered the weather and I think I did good. It's better than it's been all week when we were trying to put this together. But it's been fun. But at this time, I would like to first and mainly thank the people that helped us bring this here. I'd like to thank Fifth Third Bank, the entire community of Fifth Third Banks. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. I would like to thank all of our representatives, senators, state-wise and federal-wise. They're on stage with us today. Please stand for an applause. Are there any uh, politicians in the audience? Oh, our city council, they've been behind us 100%. We thank you guys and the city of Aurora, Mayor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I know I miss somebody, so I just say everybody, thank everybody. We had over a thousand volunteers that's worked on the healing field and the, the Vietnam Wall. We've been out here in the rain and the cold, but it's here and it's happening. I am so blessed and I think uh, I hear some airplanes in the air. I don't know if they're coming or not because I made my first mistake of the year and that was I left my phone at home to be in touch with the planes that are bringing the flyover over. But we hope they get here. I take blame. I want to thank all of the committee for the Vietnam Wall. There was, uh, we started out last January and we had a little dinner over at Grandma's table out in Montgomery. We called a few people together. We ended up with 16 people on our committee. If all the committee, if you're here in the area, please stand up, raise your hand, put your hand up. All the committee. I salute all of them. I'll tell you, this is not a one-man project. That's for a doggone sure. Anyway, I'm going to just say thank you and welcome you all here. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Rudy Keller. Oh, I don't think I've thought, uh, I think the principal, the new principal here at West High, Chuck, we love you guys. All of the student aides, all the students, all the teachers, all the volunteers here at the school district, it's been fantastic. We thank you all and welcome to a great day honoring 52,800 Americans that gave their life for this country. Thank you. Hoorah! At this time, would everybody please rise as we present our colors from the Aurora Police Department and then remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance, our National Anthem, and our Invocation. for which it stands, one nation, 
under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. of living in the most powerful and wealthiest nation on earth. We are sleeping under the blanket of freedom they have provided for us because these servants love their country so much they laid their lives down for us, their friends. May we as fellow Americans not only remember their sacrifice, but let us continue to cherish and defend the freedoms they have passed on to us. May we never take it for granted, because even though freedom is free, as this wall reminds us, it's certainly not cheap. We stand here humbly in the presence of such brave men and women who gave it all. May we follow in their footsteps, not seeking what we can get from our nation, but like them, may we be servants who ask what we can do for this nation that has given us so much. Like these fallen, may we be servants to our fellow man, woman, and child, our community, our nation, and our God. Like these servants, may we follow in their footsteps and ask not what can I get, but what can I do. Thank you, Lord, for their sacrifice and for the blessing of freedoms we enjoy today because of the wonderful servants like these. God, change our hearts and help us walk worthy of their example. It's in the name of Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to thank Dan Leonard, who said our pledge, National Anthem from Jim Cornelius and Chicago Blackhawks, and our invocation, Pastor Ed Dopel, Crossroads Community Church. We have with us today the President and CEO of Fifth Third Bank, who is our major sponsor 
for the moving wall. So I'd like to introduce Mr. Bob Sullivan for a few comments. Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, uh, Rudy. It's uh, indeed an absolute honor for uh, us to be here today and for me to represent the, the fifth third ter team um, at this you know, very, very special occasion. Uh, I had a kind of formal script here, and uh, I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to speak from the heart. Uh, I've had you know, the privilege over the years to, to do a lot of pretty special things, but I've got to tell you, walking in here today and seeing this crowd, seeing the wall, seeing the children, seeing the flags, um, it is, is overwhelming. And uh, again, we can't tell you how uh, honored and thrilled we are to, to be a part of it. Uh, it's particularly uh, you know, emotional and meaningful for me as a, a kid growing up in the 60s. And uh, like many of you, uh, the Vietnam War was on TV every night, and uh, to look at those 58,000 names is, is uh, again, uh, very, very touching. And uh, today's a great day to, to remember, to recognize, to commemorate the heroic uh, feats that uh, those men and women did uh, for our freedom. So, again, we are just uh, thrilled to be here and to uh, uh, participate in the small way in, in bringing this wall to Aurora, uh, Illinois. Uh, you know, we're really proud of our involvement at the bank uh, with the veterans community. Uh, we really embarked on a journey a few years ago to really make a meaningful uh, difference in, in the lives of veterans in the militaries, and we've been doing a lot of very uh, exciting and interesting and, and uh, worthwhile endeavors over the last few years and we invite you all down to uh, Union Station on Monday where we have a, a great day going uh, for us in which we'll be packing boxes for the troops in Afghanistan and for the VA, VA hospitals around the, the area. Uh, we also have a team of people out at cemeteries today putting uh, flags on the grave sites of veterans and we'll be raising thousands of dollars for a foundation called the Folds of Honor, uh, which provides scholarships to uh, uh, the children and family members of deceased and severely wounded veterans. And it's, it really culminates in, in, in an exciting afternoon. And we would welcome you to, to join us as well. I'd just like to quickly thank uh, John Edberg from our team, who really worked closely with, with Rudy and all the great folks out here in Aurora uh, for helping uh, put this together and making this day become a reality. So John, thank you very much. And, and you know, it's, uh, you know, the pastor's words were just, just fabulous. Jim is always off the charge and to be on the stage with Medal of Honor recipients and, and in front of all of you, the great and brave veterans of our country, uh, it is indeed an honor for me and Fifth Third Bank to be a part of that. One last thing I'd like to do, we'd like to make uh, two uh, special recognitions uh, uh, as a part of today and today's uh, great event. And John has a, a couple of plaques for us and the first one uh, again, uh, neither of these need n uh, no introduction, but uh, uh, working with Herschel uh, over the past uh, number of months to pull this all together, we really felt he deserves some very special recognition. So, Herschel. So really, on uh, behalf of Fifth Third Bank, Hershey, you know, it always takes one person uh, with an idea and a passion and, and uh, a commitment to make something happen, and you're a, a great, great example of that, as long as, as well as being a great veteran of the United States Navy, so thank you. Uh, the second award goes to the West Aurora High School and uh, to all the students, the faculty, the administration, and really the community as a whole for making this all happen today. And we'd like to uh, present this to Rudy Keller on behalf of Fifth Third Bank. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. Thank you. Once again, great to be with all of you, and uh, God bless America. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Sullivan, and uh, many thanks for the support from Fifth Third Bank. At this time, I'd like to bring up our Honorable Mayor, Mr. Thomas Wisner. Good morning. What a beautiful day. It was over a year ago that the idea for today was born in what I would call the very fertile mind of Herschel Luckenbill. Yesterday, that, the, that idea that once seemed impossible became a distinct reality when the Vietnam moving wall was erected right here at West Aurora High School. He's called the Veterans Veteran. Let's give Herschel another round of applause, if we could, for his vision. And his tireless efforts on the behalf of veterans. Uh, let me also take a moment, if I could, uh, to thank uh, District 129, uh, West Aurora Schools, and specifically West Aurora High School, Dr. Rydland, Rudy, Neil Orman, and everyone. They have been uh, not only a gracious host uh, to what we have today with the moving wall and the healing field, but in, invariably, uh, on every uh, military holiday, they have come forward and said, what can we do to help? Can we host the event? They've been wonderful, and we appreciate that very much. Let me also take a moment to commend the Moving Wall committee members for their dedication in seeing this vision through and for working nonstop to bring it to fruition. Working with the staff here at West Aurora High School, they've literally transformed this field into hallowed ground and have provided our community an opportunity to have an integral part in, of the history right, of history right here uh, in the present. And while it takes much human capital to bring the moving wall to Aurora, it couldn't have been done without the significant financial resources as well. And so I want to thank uh, Fifth Third Bank for being a true community partner on this project and many others within the city of Aurora. Thank you. Very good. We call Aurora the city of lights. Yesterday when the moving wall was erected here, I believe we added 58,282 more lights to the landscape of our community. Those 58,282 names uh, of those lost, uh, who lost their lives in Vietnam are not only etched in the wall that stands behind us, uh, but they are also etched in our hearts and in our minds as well. They are not just heroes, but heroes who must be remembered in a very deliberate and intentional way. Today, we do just that. It was about 27 hours ago that the moving wall left the comfort suites in downtown Aurora and was escorted by hundreds of patriots on motorcycles, saluted by over 700 Greenman uh, school students, uh, and then inspired all of those on the path as it made its way here to West High. On the moving wall are the names of 18 young men who left from Aurora to serve their country and never returned. They ranged in age from 19 years old to 27 years old. As all who served in, the, in our branches of our military, uh, they were young, they were brave, and they were prepared to pay the ultimate sacrifice so that we could stand here today with the freedoms and the liberties that we treasure so much. Let us make certain that those 18 young men and all 58,282 who lost their lives in Vietnam, and to all those who served and fought on foreign battlefields as well, did not do so in vain. Thank you so much for being here today with us. I'd like to welcome our past senator and current King County Board Chairman, Mr. Chris Lawson. Thank you, Rudy. Ladies and gentlemen, we honor today and every day of our lives and their lives, the men and women who understand and demonstrate through their actions what the words duty, honor, and country truly mean. There are many of us who deeply respect and cherish friends and family members who have gone to serve and who have gone to war. 
Thank God that many have come home, some have not. But all who went away came back changed. Whether they show their scars and wounds or they don't, they are there. In war, there are no unwounded soldiers. I remember in 1970, one of my closest friends was one of the few in our graduating high school class who chose to enter the service, uh, service in the army and went off to a dangerous and mysterious place called Vietnam. We didn't hear from him for more than a year, but eventually he came back, one of the lucky ones, in one piece. Where we were still uh, boys, his experience had made him a man. Where we were still silly, he was more serious. Where we still talked a lot about a little, he didn't talk too much about anything anymore. Their military service and his military service put an unbridgeable distance between those who went and those of us who didn't. Eventually, time and routine, the seasons of work and play, friends and family's love and respect, healed most of the apparent strain that the burden he had borne for the rest of us had made upon him. He has gone on to a successful business career and we never talked again about what he had seen. Many of us are family members and friends to soldiers and sailors. I would like to thank you too for what you have sacrificed for those whom you love. The sleepless nights the constant tension, the fear of what could happen, and for the fortunate many, the relief and uh, gratitude for what didn't. For those who suffered the ultimate loss, our eternal sorrow and our prayers. General George Patton remarked with a, an insensitive bravado but deep pride in raw courage and ultimate patriotism. It is wrong to mourn men who died Rather, we should thank God such men lived. But when you think about it, it's true. And we should never take for granted the virtue of those who leave us to serve. And our public policy makers and political leaders better be the first to commit and sacrifice their own family members and friends before they commit and sacrifice ours. May God bless you, our loyal American veterans, your family, and our United States of America. Uh, please join me in welcoming Mr. Leslie Hill from the American Chamber Opera as he'll be singing America the Beautiful. Beautiful. 
We have with us today Lieutenant General Rand Randall Rigby, U.S. Army, served in Vietnam to give us some remarks in honor of our Vietnam Wall. Uh, thank you, Rudy. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, I absolutely agree with you. It takes one man, one individual with a good idea and a little persuasion, and you can get a lot done. I've been on a lot of cities, and I've been on a lot of committees, but I've never seen a single statue to a committee. I always see statues to individuals like Herschel back here, so great job. Okay, Vietnam vets, where are you? Stand up. Let's sit, let's see you. Raise your hand. Thank you all for your service. A lot of it, a lot of our service went unnoticed and uncared for. But this is for you today. They say that I heard someone say one time that everything you needed to know, about half of everything you needed to know about Vietnam, you learned in about the first 24 hours that you were there. But the other half, you have to experience. And so when I was getting ready to uh, come talk to you today, I talked to my wife, what am I going to tell these people? And she says, tell them something that you know that they don't know. How many have ever been to the wall in Washington? How many have seen that? I want to describe to you my first experience back at the wall. First of all, turn around and look at this one here. This is a beautiful replica. And I do what old retired generals do best. I came through about an hour ago and inspected it and kicked the tires and met my full satisfaction. It's beautiful. And it is a worthy replica. And it travels. I got an email from a friend last night up in Alaska. I said he's, this wall has been to Alaska three times and he's gone to see it all three times. But it's a little different in Washington. If you go there, you'll note here that slopes up in the center and you have to do that because you can't go down in Washington the top is flat it's pretty flat so when you walk by those names you're actually walking downhill and it's it's a gentle slope it's not very steep but <clears throat> the further you walk into that monument the names get higher and higher and when you get to the center in the apex you have this pile of names and you're surrounded by it. And it's pretty powerful. And then you start moving out and you move toward the, uh, usually it's toward that southeast end. And when you get to the end, the names just to tread out. And finally, at the end, there are no names left. And I dare you not to turn around and look back and wonder what you just saw and what you just witnessed. It's a very special moment. The other thing you need to know about that, the names on that wall is the average age of the name on that wall is 21 and a half years old. Wars are fought by kids. They're planned and resourced by the senior, older individuals, but they're fought by the kids out there, 21 and a half years old. There's an old saying I heard at Sandhurst many years ago in honor of the fallen at the Battle of the Somme. And they read a biography of this young officer. And at the end of the biography, the narrator said, and he was 20, he is 20, and he will always be 20. I thank you for your coming out today to honor the vets, to take a look at this, uh, this beautiful monument, and I wish you all well. Thank you very much. Please welcome back to the podium, Leslie Hill, as he sings God Bless America. While the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us 
swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for I'm so fair as we raise our voices in this solemn prayer. God bless America. That I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the ocean white with foam. God bless. America, my home, sweet home, from the mountains to the prairies to the ocean, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. My home, sweet home. Yeah. I've been called back to active duty again. Hua. <laughs> Something's very special for you. Today we have two great American heroes. In 1862, Congress authorized to strike 2,000 medals of honor for the soldiers that fought in the Civil War. And in about 1883, they decided to make that a permanent award. But the problem was that the Medal of Honor was the only medal we had in this country at that time. But in uh, 1918, they created the Silver... Uh, the uh, Distinguished Service Cross in 1932, the Silver Star, 1944, the Bronze Star. About half the medals of honor that have ever been awarded were awarded during the Civil War. But today we have two distinguished Medal of Honor with us today on the stage. There are a total of 79 Medal of Honor winners that are still living. You'll probably never see two in one place again. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Sergeant Alan J. Lynch and Sergeant Sammy L. Davis, Medal of Honor. Thank you. They say that old soldiers never die. They just fade away. Well, for my brothers and sisters on the wall, I've chosen today to share with you a, a poem that was written by John McDermott, a good friend. Did you think that we'd forget you? That your memory would soon fade? That the passing years would rob you of the place in history's page? Did you think We'd scorn your sacrifice and find no honor in your debt. And when their lives paid our freedom's price, how then could we forget? And that's their greatest legacy, the freedom we hold yet. We never can repay them and never should we forget. And did you think that we'd take for granted all you fought to keep alive, that the seed your courage planted would struggle to survive. When mothers, fathers, daughters and sons gave their blood and tears and sweat to nourish a peace so dearly won, 
how then can we forget? There's an empty table here today to honor, to honor our comrades lost, to remind us all that liberty's light cannot burn without a cost. So carve the names on granite walls with sorrow, with love, and with pride. But the greatest monument of all is this dear land for which they died. Long may O glory fly o'er the land of the free. You gave your best, now old soldiers rest and pass that flag to me. Every time I see that wall, it's, um, it's kind of a touchstone. It reminds me that I can do things that they can't. I can hold my grandchildren now. I can tussle with my grandson, Patrick. He loves that. They can't do that. I can grow old with my wife. And we can say goodbye to each other when the time comes. They can't do that. I can see my granddaughters and my children walk down the aisle and get married. I can experience the joy of holding my grandbabies when they were born. Well, a little afterwards. They can't do any of that. They're not here. But we can. Each one of us who have served have left somebody and some part of ourselves on the battlefields. We all lost friends. It's up to us really to live the lives that they cannot live, to be the people that they can't be, to honor and respect their memory by living lives that they could never live. We veterans have a duty not just to our nation, not just to, to our country, but, but to the men and women that have served, who never made it home. We have a duty to live those lives for them, to enjoy the things that they can never enjoy, to make this country worth fighting and worth dying for, for each succeeding generation. It's up to us to set an example of what America is really all about. That's who we are as veterans. That's our duty as veterans, to never let any soldier, sailor, airman, marine, coastie, whoever, die in vain, to make sure that that legacy of freedom and equality and justice lives on in us, in the example that you and I set to the young men and women that are coming up, that are going into the service, to the kids in high school and grade school to show them what, what courage and honor and integrity really is, to show them what this country is really all about. We have to set the example because we understand the cost more than anyone else. On this Veterans Day, let us rededicate ourselves to being that example, to living those lives to its fullest for them for our brothers and sisters on that wall, for our brothers and sisters, our grandfathers and grandmothers that fought in World War II, Korea, World War I, back to the Civil War, to those that are serving now. Let's never let their lives be wasted or forgotten. Thank you. There is nothing broken in this great nation that cannot be repaired by the involvement of we the people. And shame on us if we fail to do so. Two Medal of Honor recipients together here on this stage. 
Let's rise and give them their just due. Thank you. Sergeant Sammy Lee Davis, Sergeant Alan Van Flinch. Your service to our country. And we have a beautiful fallen soldier tribute that's played on the bagpipes entitled Going Home. recognize all veterans in the audience. If you're a veteran from World War II, please stand. From Korea, from the Korean War, please stand. From Vietnam, from Iraqi freedom, enduring freedom, and all other wars. Thank you to all of our veterans with us today. Thank you for your service to our country. I would like to personally thank Dr. James Ryland and our superintendent of schools and our school board president, Mr. Neil Ormond, for allowing us to use the facilities here at West Royal High School for this wonderful patriotic event. I, I truly appreciate it. Thanks for your trust in our committee and allowing us the freedom to take over the property at West Royal High School. Thank you so much, gentlemen. <laughs> With us on stage also we have uh, Miss Illinois. She's here for our entire five-day event. Miss Brittany Smith, supporting all patriotic events throughout the state of Illinois. And at this time, committee members from our Vietnam Wall Committee will be reading the names of those soldiers on the wall that are from Aurora, the fallen from Aurora. Please stand as we recognize 18 of Aurora's best. First Lieutenant James Allen Asher, United States Army, fallen on January 8, 1989, age 26, panel W35, line 32. Lance Corporal Romero Gardinas, United States Army, our United States Marine Corps, fallen February 27th, 1968, age 21, panel 41, line 048. Sergeant John Paul Crandall, United States Army.
Fallen, March 21, 1967. Age, 22. Panel 17E, Line 1. Specialist, Robert Bruce Coran, United States Army. Fallen on August 5, 1971. Age, 20. Panel 59E, I'm sorry, panel 03W, Line 123. Specialist, Albert Eugene Dahl, United States Army, fallen on May 13, 1968, age 20, panel 59E, line 18. Fellow classmate from class of 1965, West Aurora High School, and personal friend, Corporal William Richard DeSantis, United States Army, fallen on April 15, 1970, age 23, panel 11W, line 6. Specialist Thomas Lee Gaines, United States Army, Fallen on March 1st, 1969, age 24, panel 30W, line 4. Private Richard Lee Garlic, United States Marine Corps, fallen on March 1, 1968, age 20, panel 42E, line 16. Private Michael Wade Hagee, United States Marine Corps, fallen on June 8, 1969, age 19, panel 23W, line 110. Sergeant Carl Richard Herring, United States Army, fallen on Feb I'm sorry, September 24th, 1968, age 19, panel 42W, line 3. Sergeant Robert Dale Harriet, United States Army, fallen on January 30th, 1974, age 27, panel 41W, line 40, still missing in action. Specialist Charles Burton Jeffries, Jr., United States Army, fallen on March 16th, 1966, age 20, panel 6E, line 15. Sergeant Richard D. Jewell, United States Marine Corps, fallen on February 26, 1969, age 20, panel 31W, line 68. Fellow classmate, class of 1965, West Aurora High School, Corporal Dennis Floyd Cabrera, United States Army, fallen on January 10, 1970, age 22, panel 14W, line 23. Specialist Gerald John LaFleur, United States Army, fallen on July 15, 1968, age 20, Panel 52W, line 36. Sergeant James Lee Lake, United States Army, fallen on May 12, 1968, age 21. Panel 59E, line 6. Private Charles Michael Staddle, United States Army, fallen on April 5th, 1969, age 21, panel 27W, line 22. Corporal Dennis Aaron Toadvine, United States Marine Corps, fallen on March 11, 
1968, age 20, panel 42E, line 22. Sergeant Gregory Lee Peffer, United States Army, fallen January 22nd, 1971, age 23, panel W5, line 61. Please remain standing as our Aurora Police Department comes out for a 21 volley salute and then remain standing for the playing of taps. Thank you for being with us this morning. This is just a reminder that uh, tomorrow at 2 in the afternoon, we have a ceremony right here for our Gold Star families. At 10 o'clock Sunday morning, we have our Sunday morning service. At 2 in the afternoon, we have our wreath lane ceremony on Monday. And then on Monday at dusk is our closing ceremony. And here is uh, Herschel Luckenbill for our closing comments. The planes came through for me, didn't they? <laughs> oh my goodness. What a great day it is here in Aurora. We want to thank all of you. And one thing Rudy did not mention, so he made his first mistake today. You know, right here this evening at seven at six o'clock, we have a public assembly inside the auditorium of the school. You forgot that, didn't you? <laughs> and then at seven fifteen, right here on this in the front of us here, we're going to have a flag retiring. We'd like for everyone to come out. We were, we we're going to retire three flags the proper way that you're supposed to retire them. And then we're going to let any individual that would like to dedicate a flag and retire that flag to come up and retire a flag. Then we have over 800 flags that we need to retire tonight. They have served their purpose in this great country by flying high and protecting us. So be here tonight at 7.15, 6 o'clock in the auditorium, 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we got to have a little fun those, this week. So that's Saturday night down at Valley Doyle Pub. It's going to cost you 20 bucks, but we're going to give you a commemorative mug of the Vietnam Wall, which no one's seen yet. We're going to give you a free beer, we're going to give you hors d'oeuvres, and we're going to give you a chance to win a 51 inch TV for 20 bucks. Now, how can you beat that? <laughs> so come to Valley Doyle on Saturday night, 6 o'clock, and come back to Wall. Enjoy all of the programs. It's going to be a fantastic week. If you're a veteran or a patriot, you belong in Aurora, Illinois this week. Right, Mayor? You're right. All right. Thank you all for coming. Enjoy the wall. Take it in. It's yours. <laughs>